This is a regions level chemistry video on formula mass and percent composition. So for formula mass, what you have to do is add up all the masses of all the parts of the compound. So if we take an example like calcium fluoride. Calcium, if we go into the periodic table, calcium has a mass of 40. We have one of those, so the total mass that calcium is contributing to this compound is 40 atomic mass units. Fluorine has a mass of 19. We have two of those. So fluorine contributes a total of 38 to the total mass of this compound. So if we add up all the parts here, we have the part that's calcium, we have the part that's fluorine. If we add up the two parts here, we get 78 for the formula mass. So again, to get the formula mass, what we do is add up all the parts of the formula, add up the masses of all the parts. So we have one part calcium and two parts fluorine. Again, with these subscripts, that's telling us, we have an imaginary one here, that's telling us how many of each element we have. So we have two fluorines and one calcium. So again, we add up all the parts and that gives us the total mass. So if we look at an example here, the formula mass of MgSO4. Magnesium, if we go into the periodic table, has a mass of 24.3. Sulfur has a mass of 32, and oxygen has a mass of 16. We have one magnesium, one sulfur, and four oxygen. So we multiply the magnesium by one, that gives us 24.3. We multiply the sulfur by 1, that gives us 32. We multiply the oxygen by 4, because there's 4 of them. So the total mass for oxygen is 64, for sulfur is 32, and for magnesium is 24.3. So again, we take the atomic mass of each element and multiply by the number that we have in the formula, and that gives us the total mass of that element within that compound. So if we add all those up, that would give us a total of 120.3. So again, with formula mass, what we want to do is add up all the parts, and that gives us the total for the compound. So another example here, C5H12. We have five carbons here, again, because of this subscript here. We have 12 hydrogens. So a carbon, the mass is 12. We have five of those. We multiply by five and that gives us 60 total for the mass of carbon. We have one as the mass of hydrogen. There's 12 of those. So 12 is the total mass that hydrogen contributes and 60 is the total mass that carbon contributes. If we add up the parts, we get 72 for the total mass of CH2, or sorry, C5H12. All right, so again, we're just adding up all the parts here. So there's some examples here. If you want to try them out, you can pause the video. Uh, I'll write down the answers now, but again, pause the video if you want to stop and uh, try out these examples. So the answers for these, uh, KOH has a mass of 56. CUPO4 has a mass of roughly 159. You can have 158.5. I'm not too concerned with the rounding right now. Um, some teachers might have you round to one decimal place, some might have you round to the nearest whole number. That really is kind of beside the point for what we're doing right now. Uh, Fe203 has a mass of roughly 160, and C2H302 has a mass of 59. With this, it's really important not to take this negative sign into account when you do the mass. This negative sign only tells us the charge, so this means that this is a negatively charged ion. It has nothing to do with the mass. We still have two carbons, we still have three hydrogens, and we still have two oxygens here. Those numbers have no bearing on this charge, and nor does the charge have any bearing on these numbers. So for percent composition, this is basically something that we're going to have to use formula mass for. So what we're finding is how much of each element we have in the compound, and this is again based on percentage. So the percent composition formula is the part over the whole 
times 100%. This formula is on the back of your reference table, on the very back page of your Regents reference table. Uh, you get the mass of the part over the mass of the whole times 100%. So you don't need to memorize this formula, but again, you can get it from the back of your reference table. So we're going to do an example of percent composition here. And basically, however many elements you have, that's how many percentages you should get. Because we're trying to find what the overall composition, what this thing, what this uh, compound is made of, and we're going to get that from these two parts. We've got a part that's carbon and a part that's hydrogen. And we want to figure out what percentage is carbon and what percentage is hydrogen. So however many elements you have in this compound, you should have that many percentages in your percent composition calculation. So the first step with any percent composition calculation is the formula mass. So to get the formula mass, we're going to use the same process as before. We have a mass of 12 for carbon and one of those. We have a mass of 1 for hydrogen and two of those. So this would give us 12 and 2 for the masses of carbon and hydrogen, respectively. So the total formula mass here is 14. So again, the formula is the part over the whole. So what we need to do here is take the part that's hydrogen, which is 12, or sorry, carbon, which is 12, divide by the total, which is 14, multiply by 100%, and this will give us somewhere around 85.6%. Uh, and that's the percentage of this compound by mass that is made of carbon. So we could do the same thing for hydrogen, Hydrogen, the part that's hydrogen is 2. So we can divide that by the total, which is again 14, multiply by 100, and that'll give us 14.4, roughly, percent. And that's the amount, or the percentage of this compound by mass that's hydrogen. So again, the key here is to do the part over the whole. And I'll highlight that in a different color here because it's very important. The part over the whole times 100% will give you the percent composition. And we have to do this as many times as we have elements in the compound. So here we have two elements. We need to do two separate percents. And if you do it right, your percentages should add up to 100. Right? So here we have 85.6, 14.4. Those add up to 100% because we want to see what is the makeup of this compound. It's a whole. The whole is 100%. Uh, so that's what you should end up with when you add up all the percentages of your compound. So again, percent composition, the part over the whole, that's the key with this. So if we do another example here with water, we're gonna, we again need to start with the total. We need to get the whole to do part over the whole. We need this whole, so that's the formula mass. So for the formula mass, we have 16 for oxygen, and there's one of those. We have one for hydrogen and there's two of those so this is going to be 16 this is going to be two so our formula mass here our whole is 18 so when we go to do the calculation we gotta do it once for hydrogen once for oxygen hydrogen the part that's hydrogen is two so we have two over 18 was our total multiply by a hundred percent and that'll give you 11% hydrogen. If we do this for oxygen, we have 16 over 18 times 100%. This will give us 89% oxygen. So again, the key is to do the part over the whole. And that's what gives us the percent composition for each element. So we had two elements here, so we end up with two percentages. As many uh, percentages as you have elements. So another example here, NO3. Nitrogen, again, we need to start by finding the formula mass. So nitrogen has a mass of 14. We've got one of them. So the total mass of nitrogen in this compound is 14. For oxygen, the mass is 16. There's three of those, so that makes 48 for the mass of oxygen. Add these up, and this will give us 62 for the mass of NO3. That's our formula mass here. 
Again, this charge does not impact the mass. It only indicates the charge. So do not subtract one from the mass or anything like that. The charge has nothing to do with that. So we have our formula mass here. This is our whole. So what we need to do is the part over the whole for each one. So if we do nitrogen, the part that's nitrogen is 14. So we do 14 over 62. That's our whole. And that would give us let's say 23% nitrogen. We're going to do the part that's oxygen, 48, over the whole, 62. That's going to give us 77% oxygen. So we had 48 as our part for oxygen here. So we do the part over the whole, we get 48 over 62, and that gives us 77% for oxygen. So one last example of percent composition here. If we've got silver acetate, the total number of percentages we're going to need here is four because we've got one, two, three, four elements in this compound. So for each one, we're going to have to do a separate percentage. But first, what we have to do is calculate the total mass of this compound, the formula mass. So silver, the mass is 108 if we round that off. So 108 times one of those means that the total for silver is 108. For carbon, we have 12, and there's two of those, so that contributes 24. For hydrogen, we have... Sorry, I'm just going to move this back over real quick. For hydrogen, we have a mass of 1, Again, that's just off the periodic table. There's three of those, so the mass of hydrogen is three. For oxygen, we have a mass of 16, and we have two of those. So total, it's going to contribute 32 to the mass. So if we add all these up, we end up with a mass of 167. So that's our formula mass. This is our whole. So if we go to calculate the percent composition here, we need four separate percentages. So for silver, we could do the 108 over the 167 multiplied by 100%, and that'll give us, let's say, 64.6% silver. For carbon, we have 24 over 167, and that's going to give us, let's say, 14.4% carbon. So if we do the hydrogen, I'll bring these over here. Hydrogen, the mass is 3 for the part. The whole is still 167, so that's going to give us 1.8% uh, hydrogen. And for oxygen, if we just do this down here, we've got 32 over 167, multiply by 100%, and that will give us 19.2% oxygen. So again, if you add all these percentages up, you should get 100%, which again, your total should be 100% because we're representing the whole for this compound. But again, this is just the part over the whole for each of these elements in the compound. So, one last concept here that has to do with formula mass. Hydrates. Hydrates are compounds that contain water as part of their formula. So what this means is that this is regular old magnesium sulfate, but as part of the formula we have seven water molecules. Remember, ionic compounds are these crystalline structures, so this just means that these seven water molecules are part of that crystalline structure. So same thing here, we have sodium carbonate. This these 10 water molecules are part of this crystalline structure. This is all one formula. So if we want to calculate the percent composition of a hydrate, all we have to do is include the water in the calculation. So here we have five water molecules. They're a part of this formula. So the first thing we need to do is find the total mass, the formula mass. So copper has a mass of 63.5. 
There's one of those, so it's contributing a total of 63.5. Sulfur has a mass of 32, just one of those, so it contributes a mass of 32. This is for copper and sulfur. Oxygen has a mass of 16, and we got four of those, so that's a total of 64 for oxygen. But at the end here, we need to add in these five water molecules. So if we do a little side calculation here, 16 is the mass of oxygen plus 1 is the mass of hydrogen. We got two of those. So for H2O, the mass is 18. That's our mass of each of these water molecules. So one water molecule is 18. We got five of those. So the total mass that water is contributing here is 90. So, we're trying to find the percentage of water in this compound. So we're doing the part that's water, which is 90, over the whole, which if we add this all up, this will give us uh, 250, we'll say. Maybe 249.5, but we're not going to be too picky with that. Let's call it 250. So, to find the percentage of water in this compound, I'll do this down here maybe in a different color to separate it, we have 90, which is the part that's water, over 250, which is the whole. So again, this is still just part over the whole. And if we multiply that by 100%, we get the percentage of water to be 36% in this compound. So in summary, for the hydrates, there's nothing different to do, except you need to make sure that this water gets included in your formula mass. So this 250 is the correct formula mass for this, and we need to make sure that this would all add up to, let's say, 160 without the water. It's very important that the water is included as part of that formula mass calculation. So then we just go to do the part over the whole here, and that gave us 90 over 250, and that's 36%. Alright, so I hope this was a helpful video on percent composition and formula mass. Feel free to go back, stop, pause the video if you need to, and try some of the examples over again. Thank you.